Hi guys, welcome back. Right, um, I'm doing a vase today. Mm -hmm. I've got this piece. I've already rounded it and I've already put a tenon on just to save a bit of time because Lisa keeps moaning at me. I'm taking too long <laughs> on my videos. This is a bit of um, sycamore, this one. Um, it's pretty boring grain wise, but I'm not worried. It's just, it's going to be a little vase for some flowers for outside. But um, just, you know, what you, what you do. <laughs> so, right, I'm going to pop it in my chuck. I've got a big enough tennis, so it's going into my four inch jaws. So this should get a good good hold on it. Right, I'm going to get it gentle at first, bring my tail stock up, put a bit of pressure on it. And then I'm going to tighten it down. So I'll get it tight. Let me just turn it, make sure it's all, yeah, it's all even round. Right, so I'm tight. And I'm going a quarter, just a fraction over. I've got, I've got eight inches overhanging here. So I'm going to shape the outside of it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, whether I'm going to go for just a, a vase like that sort of shape or whether I want to do a sort of in and a, a belly. I've, I haven't really decided. I was thinking about an in and a belly. I'm going to put a line here first to part. Let me actually let me put some lines on this before I start. Rest in. Don't want that great big one. <coughs> right, okay. So, let me, I've got speed turned down. Right, okay. So, what I'm going to do first off, I'm going to pull that the bottom so I can come into that. Obviously, we've got our top here, and I'm thinking of coming in. Maybe to there, and then do this as a an out bit. But I'll see. I'll see how I feel as I'm doing it. Right. Okay. I'm gonna get my mask on. I'm mainly doing it because I've done all the um, other tests with the Holloway, and I just want to see. I've done some vases with the GTSC H4 because, like I said, I'm making that myself and I'm my own bars, and it's working. It's working all right. It's going really well. So I just want to try it on something a bit deeper now. Right. Okay. Make sure it's all really right. Yeah, everything's locked down. So I'm speed up a bit. Right. I should probably bring it down a little bit in size. I won't have it as big as this. Uh, Parting tool first. I'm going to go in here. Right, let me just check my feet. Yeah, I'm all okay. into there. Right, okay. Right, we're going to go with a, a spindle gouge at first. So I might take a bit of wood away with a, a rocking gauge at first, just get a bit of this wood away. Please speed up a bit. Early. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want it to look like an urn. <laughs> I really don't. So, right, okay. Let me come back with my finger gouge.
Get a bit deep on the cut there. Well, I might come in with a bowl of scales because I've got a bit of a point on that. This one. Keeping that sort of shape, really. Need some fine cuts here. Two bumps there. That's it, that's done. Right, okay, let's just find this bit. Looking good. I'm going with that sort of shape, I think. Mm -hmm. Might want to just get this a little bit more, got a slight flat to it as it goes in. have this um, sort of back to the top. It's not too bad, there's no sharpness. It's alright, right, well, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on the outside of that.
good. and then we get turned round then I can sort out for Halloween. Let's get that bowl gas back up there. Right, I'm not going to wax it as yet, I'll wax it after when I finish. Oh, that's not got a bad pattern to it. Mm -hmm. Nice finish, no torn grain, no torn marks, that's all good. Right, we'll get that um, do breed. Hollow. That's the word, hollow. <laughs> Do what's it? <laughs> yeah, do be what's it. <laughs> right, I'm going to drill a depth hole first. I'll tell you what I've got from it. I'm going to drill a drill a depth hole. Um, I've got a 16 mil, 16 mil drill bit, nice big long one. Um, and I've got a mark on there. I can see where I'm going to go down to. And that's what I'm going to do. Right. Okay, everything's held there. Uh, speed's down. Right. Let's start it. Right, we're just over a thousand RPM. That's what I'm going to start with on the drilling. Should be warm enough to put a bit of uh, wax on it. Yep, the wax is melting straight onto it. That should help to stop it make any noise. Oh, another tip for you guys. <laughs> because it's stopping it from any squealing happening. Everything's staying nice. Yeah. 
Right down to that bit. I've got, to go. I've got a mark on my drill so I can see it. Got a little bit to go. There we are, that's it, we're there. There we go. Right, we'll stop that for a minute. Right, so yeah, I've drilled down to here, so that's that's good. Don't touch the end of that drill bit because it'll be hot. <laughs> right, okay. And it wobbles a bit because obviously when you're going in like that, especially with that sort of twist drill bit, it wants to follow the grain. Okay? So I haven't got any long fastener bits, not that long. So I don't normally drill, so I normally just do a small hole and then uh would turn it. Then I'll turn it. I normally turn, so... Right, okay. So, I'm going to do... Same as I normally do to start off, I'm going to hollow that out with a square chisel. I'm going to get a start on... So, I'm above centre, because I've got a 12mm bar. So, on this one, so I'm above centre, okay? I could start with a 10mm, but... I'll probably just stick, I'll go with the 12 mil bar and that way I should be able to go all the way down with it. All right, now just check that because that's got a slight wobble there. I just want to check. No, that is all right. Let me just check the tight, make sure this is still tight. Yeah, there I'll look, a little bit of a turn. It's always worth check, double checking it when you've done a little bit because the wood compresses and uh, you always get another little quarter of a turn after a, after a few minutes of it being turned. With pieces like this that hang out, it's best to do it because there's a, obviously there's a lot of overhang there. Right, okay. A quick slurp of coffee. And we'll see how this goes. We've got a lot of wood to come out of that, hell of a lot. So we're just gonna take our time and see what we can do. So that's going to be. So just take that tool rest down on the fraction. That's it. Right, okay.
going back up the track, so I can't get into the hole, it keeps pushing me over. So, if you find that you can't get into that centre hole, when it's short, it just raise your chisel, raise your tool rest up so you angle down, then you'll get into that hole a bit better. You'll know what it is because it'll keep pushing you to the middle. If you want to clear the dust out, roll the chisel to the side like that and come backwards with it. That way it won't catch. Don't do it with it flat because it'll, it'll catch on the side. This bit here is not being able to see anything. See if I can, I'm going to clean it out a little bit, so I'll take some of it out with this. So I'm going to hoover it out, so I can have a look. Have a little look inside there. Alright, we're all good, we're doing good. doing good but right now what I am going to do is I'm going to do a little bit on this face here I just want to slope this in a little bit before I go too far in and for that I'm just going to use the bulk gouge but remember we are on end grain so don't come in like this because you'll get a skip back keep quite a thickness on my outer rim here because it's quite a biggish vase. Yeah, 
Right. Okay, I'm going to go for that sort of top on it. I'm just going to bring the light down. Oh. Right. Give yourself a bit of a light there. Okay. Now I can come back in again. Now you know normally I'm not one for hanging over grabbing on my tools, but when you're going down deep like this, you've got to get some weight down on the chisel. Okay? You got your main thing is to get weight down so it, it stops all that vibration. Right, sorry, I've got something in my way here. I'm just gonna well move up the chisel. So to just unscrew this and take this off. I'm using my camera arm here that's got a light on it. Right, okay. Now I can see. Deeper than I thought, actually. I think I'm down. A, I think I might be at the bottom. Can you see the hole? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Uh, I've got a tiny, tiny little bit to go. Okay, let's uh, come down here and get rid of some of this on the side. Let's have a clean out and see what we got. We've got a lot of that out. Right, yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. We've got to cut in a little bit there. But I'm, there I've got to go a little bit more just on that bottom. It's a tiny little a little bit in the centre. It's, it's hard to actually find it when you're <laughs> when you're going down there. So I've got there's the hole. I've got a little bit there. I've got to be in that that area there. Right, let's start her up. Yeah, I think we've got that now.
Got watch now because I don't want to come through on that bottom bit there. Right, okay. We're looking good. Right, I can see now. I mean, you probably can't see that, but I can see I've got the bit at the bottom there, so I can push down still on that. And I'm going to be flat on the bottom. So we do that and then we start taking out this bit on the side with the other chisel. But a good way of, um, well, if you've got vases and things to do, guys, a good way is with your square chisel. Because you can go in and you'll get a better finish than with a lot of the other tools. And people think, oh yeah, but that's scraping. Well, it's better than drilling, I think. <laughs> And it might be, but a lot of people will scrape at the end to finish it. So why not scrape at the start? Right, let's uh, get this done. Right, okay. Probably done with that one for now. Now, you can use it, I mean, I'm using, as I said, I'm using all the deep, the deep hollowers today, the deep chisels, we're going very deep. Now we've got the nine mil deep hollower, that's got the nine mil standard cutter on, which is good, we can come in here. I mean, there's no, um, right, I'm going down to the bottom, so I'm uh, rolling it over. There we are. This is all done by Phil. And what you don't want to be doing is being down here like this, going in there, 
like that because if you do get a catch that's going to come up and smack you right on the jaw because <laughs> you can't hold it enough you know. right so that's the nine mil but for me when i'm doing uh deep polyphores I, I prefer the 10 mil au okay on the ramp on the deep hollow one this one can come in now what i suggest you put a mark on the on your ferrule so you can see which way that is for up because you don't want to go in with it straight up and when believe me when it's down there on the ramp bar you can't remember where it is so at least this way i can close it so it can't do no catching it can't cut look it can't do nothing and then i'll just bring it gently in there we are Thing we're trying to stop here is the vibe there's no catching there's no grabbing it's just the vibration you can hear it now and again it's because i've you know i've got that much of the tool overhanging so you're going to get that bit of on there you've got to try and get the weight down on it just to stop it vibrating and everything's just done by as i say by feel SCH4 for this bit to get in around here. Beautiful tool for this. Again, just take it easy. What you're trying to do is just stop the vibration. Now, what I have noticed with this this one is when you get him right down that far, it's come up and be a little bit higher on the tool rest. Okay, because because we're coming up, we, we're tending to be a lot of the time we can't get dead on that tip. We come round to here, but by higher on the tool rest, as you come down, you can actually change it to get onto there. So that's that's the theory. Well, that's actually what works. Right, let's go to the bottom. bit higher because we're getting out to get the vibration bring the tool rest up that helps to stop it see you're getting a little bit you're just, just getting the weight on it being such a, a skinny slim bloke like me i can't get enough weight on the on the chisel <laughs> Some of you other guys, you know, you might be might have more weight to put on it. <laughs> Little skinny mini like me. Getting there, though. we're getting in there.
So this shows you the bit of the cut. So if you can see that, when I'm doing it here, this shows you the bit of cut that you should be working on. See? And see what you get. See the cut? Right, look at what you get with it. Okay? So that's the bit of the cutter you want to be working on when you're down inside. It's this piece all the time, right there. See? That's why I've designed it with this angle. And you'll get a super smooth finish on it. But the trouble is, when you're down inside there, and you're pulling up, you tend to sometimes you come onto this bit of the cutter. And that acts more as a, a scrape. It's all right if you're round here like this, it'll be all right. But when you're coming up, so if you can, try and get your tool round that way so you're still working on that tip. And as you can see, there's, there's no grabbing. Look, it doesn't grab. Okay, there's, there's no grabbing with it. It's not catches. The only thing you're holding on for is to stop vibration. We're going to have a look, a hoover out and a hoover out and see what sort of finish we've got in there. Right, we're not too bad on the bottom. I think we've got a little bit... We're nice here, we've got a nice round there. A, a little bit more to go just around this bit. So I'm being careful down the bottom because obviously I'll taper in and if I go too much in that, that's not going to be good. So, I've got a little bit more to take off down this side. I'm actually going to put my tool rest... Just actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change to a thinner one. And see if I can get a little bit of support inside to stop the... Um, just to stop the vibration. Right, okay. Now I want to get the height. A bit too high on that. Right, we should be all right at that. Now that should help me to, to stop the vibration. Yeah, see, look at that. Now I can get my... I can hold it here and I can feel what's happening now, see? I said before, it's the wood turner's worst enemy, vibration. <laughs> vibration, chatter or bounce, it's all the same thing really. There we go, we're getting a bit deeper, we're getting a bit deeper. And of course we've got the problem because we've got all the bloody sawdust building up inside. See if we can drag some of it out. Right. This one I like to be able to hold it gentle because I'm feeling I'm running my cut across it and I'm feeling where the bumps are, the ridges. See, there's no catchy, I can go in 
and I can come over to the side down the bottom there, look. There's no catching, there's no grabbing. That, that's right away on the bottom there, look. I'm that far in, okay? No grabbing, no nothing, one-handed I can do it. But what I can do is I can come along and I can feel for the bump. So if I go backwards, there, see there? I can see I'm all right there, I come out there. So I've got a little bit there. Now, so this tool now, I'm actually making myself. So these ain't bought in these bars, I make these, these, these bars up. Um, so it's totally handmade by me from start to finish, every bit of it. And this is why I wanted to test it for, before I put it out there. This will be going on my website tonight. So you can buy, I'm out of the old bars. Why am I shouting? Why am I shouting? Why don't I just take that off for a second? Right. <laughs> Okay, guy. <laughs> right. Can you now, hear me? Yeah, so this, the other bars, I did say on one of my other videos, they quadrupled the price and I am not paying it for bars. It's, it's just ridiculous. They make the tools, I'd have to end up charging nearly 100 quid for tool. And I'm not doing it. Um, I make these totally myself now, okay? I make this all up. It's totally handmade, 100%. So if you're not into handmade tools, don't buy my ones, okay? These are not mass produced, they're not done by CMC machines. And the big difference is, is these work and the others don't. <laughs> um, now, as you, I don't like turning without a mask, but I'm gonna do it this bit because I'm talking. What I was trying to say is, see, I can come in here and I can run that backwards with no fear of it catching, it can't cut. I'm going backwards, it cannot cut. Yeah. Let me, <laughs> Give me two seconds, guys, because it's snowing inside it's, this bowl. <laughs> this uh, vase. It's, it's look at all that. Bit. Look, look, look at that. Right now, you can't see in there. I've, I'm near enough there now. I've near enough got my my fit. That's that's taking that all out. And this is a big big vase. This. Right. Yep. I'm happy with that. A little bit of tear on the bottom. Uh, it's going to be very hard to get that smooth. I, I'll have a little go with one of the other chisels. Let's see if I can get that as a smooth finish on the bottom. I should be able to. I'm, I'm, I'm clever. <laughs> right, now then. What I was trying to say was, with it, there's no chance of this tool grabbing or catching, okay? That's how I've designed it. That's how I've made it. That's why it's got this particular shape and the cutter's fitted in a particular way. Now, what you can do... Because until you actually get it there and you want it to cut and push in, it won't cut, okay? Now, you can run this tool backwards, and I can go all the way down. Now, see, I can see, as I go down here, and if I look, there's a slight little bump there. See, it just goes, it goes over it, okay? There's that little bump there, so I know I've got to take that bit out. Then as I come down there, I come around because I've got this shape here. So that, that's fine. I'm okay down there. I'm good with that. I'm quite happy. I've just got time. Now, no one's ever going to see it, but I know it's there, so I've got to get rid of it. I've got a little bump there, and I've got a couple of little tall lines in there I can see. But I've got virtually no, I've got, well, I've, I've even got no torn grain because this tool cuts, it doesn't scrape, it cuts, okay? Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start up. I'll do this little bit of that. I don't like turning about the face shield, but so you can hear me. Right, so. Here I go, look, I can come in, I can touch, right, now I'm gonna run it back. Now there's that bit, okay? So now I can very gently. Now that's the bit you gotta stop is vibration. It's not catching, it's vibration. Very gently. Right, so I can feel where it is, and I can feel, look, one hand, I can feel every, feel every little bump. There's no cutting until I put that little, tiny little bit of pressure this way, now it's cutting. Remember with this tool, 
again the way I designed it we can come right out still cutting you can't do that with any swan nets okay you'll get to that swan bit and bang over you'll go with this one total control total safe no catching and here I'm virtually not even touching look I can come out okay it will not grab it and flip it it works fine So I've got this tool in my hand, I'm going to carry on and just bring it round. Right, now you show me you can do that with a swan neck one. Right. Just a tiny little bit there I'm not happy with, just there. That's it. Don't even know whether I should waste a bit of sandpaper on it. I mean, bloody hell, it's so clean. <laughs> right, okay, guys, that's enough of showing off. Um, yeah. If you're into doing these sort of things, that's the tool you want. As you've seen, you've seen me use it. This isn't a small piece. This isn't some little, little, what's it thing. That tool handles it, okay? Right, I'm gonna move that out of the way. I'm gonna do a bit of sanding. Just a tiny little bit of sanding on this rim bit. I don't know what I'm doing this for, because no, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to use this one. I'm not going to bother. Nothing's going to come out and go into that, is it? Right. I'm basically just going to do a little bit here on this rim. say I would try and clean that bottom up there's a, a a little bit of torn grain on that very bottom I did say I was going to try and clean that up so what I'm going to do oh, this is the 12 mil deep hollower okay I'm going to see if I can come in and get onto that bottom go so if you enter your deep hollowing guys you've got a 12 mil I've got a 10 mil and I'm doing a 9 mil standard you've also got the 8 mil and the 6 mil all in these hollowers all the AU cutters if you're into hollowing the AU cutters are the way to go I've always said it the standard cutters are good but for hollowing you can't beat the AU cutters you really can't they're so good and when you get them at the right angles, I mean, people say those six mils are aggressive, but it's only because you're using them as a scraper. You're not getting them to cut. You think just because it's cut, it cuts. It doesn't cut. It only cuts if you present it in the way to cut. You, you have to help the tool do its bit. The same for any tool. Right, okay. Now, um, what was I going to do? I was going to do something. 
and I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> oh, well, oh yeah, I want to just check on that. What, that make sure with that depth. Yeah, I've got enough. I can take that, part that off at that bottom bit, mm -hmm. and that'd be okay. So I just wanted to check with that because I'm not really going to be able to hold that round that way. I don't want to mess the top, so I'm going to basically just part the top off. I want to go for a flat bottom on this vase. Yes, I did manage to clean that up on that bottom. I've got one little line in there, right down near the bottom, but I'm, I'm happy to accept that. That's inside of it. It's a vase, so. That's not too bad. Right, okay, let's get a bit of a um, finish on this now. Put the mask back on. Going as far as I can go, I'm not going to go all the way. Thinking about it. I thought I'd lose it. I thought I'd lose my bit of rag. <laughs> it's stuck in there now, look. It's stuck to the bloody side, that's the trouble. Oh, but it did coat it all, so that's alright. It done what it needed to do in a very quick uh, a quick way. There we go. on this outside. I'm in there. <laughs> So let's see how we're going to get this thing on. Look at that, I'm still getting the use going. <laughs>
dat al een beetje is. Dit was vind ik jou. Ik moet een beetje anders staan hier. That's it, I just wanted that bit there, so I'm going to stand that up. I'm going to blend that in, see? Before I pop that right off. have a little bit of sanding on the bottom afterwards but what I want to do one I don't want no I'm gonna fall off of that the bugger I don't want if that comes off I don't want that to hit there so I'm still take this down a little bit that's it right okay Let's keep that at a slight angle. You can get tissue here. Because I might be holding it for a few minutes. A few seconds. I'm going to cut that last little bit because it's going to be a bit heavier to hold up. I don't want it to get damaged, it's, it's done really well. There we go, I'm going to sand that little bottom bit. So just give me a second guys. Right, what I'm probably going to do in a bit, I mean that's the bottom, I've got it all flat. That's just, that sits nice and flat, okay. What I'm probably going to do in a minute is put a disc in there and sand it off on the bottom and then I'll, I'll put a bit of wax. But there you go guys, you can see. Right, 
Now, if I take, if I take this off, I can stop shouting. Oh, bloody donut, isn't it? I'm shouting away, and I'll just take the thing off. <laughs> right, right, dicky donut. Right, okay, guys. Well, there's my um, my vase. I'm quite happy with the shape. It doesn't look too much like an urn. So, and there you go. If you can see the inside, I don't know whether that helps. Okay, we're hollowed. We're hollowed right in at the side. I, uh, we've probably got about mm, six, seven mil. That's probably about six mil. Which for a vase this size, I don't want to go much thinner than that. I don't want it falling over. It's just going to have some, probably some dried flowers and that in it. I couldn't get any wax right on the very bottom, but I did manage to clean most of the bottom up. Okay. So there you go, guys. And that's what the hollowing tools can do. Okay. And as you can see, we've got a lovely finish on the outside of it. We've got no, um, no torn grain, no tool marks, no chatter marks. And just for a little bit of uh, sanding, a, a tiny bit of waxing, we've got quite a nice finish on that. And on the side here. And as you can see, I came out of that with the SCH4 hollower. I've done the outside of that, I'll come round it, okay? Because you can get it to cut, it sheer cuts. A lot of people say, well, yeah, but you're coming the wrong way. Well, what's the wrong way? Because if you put that there, whether I go that way or whether I go that way, it's the same because the guts have gone. It only matters when you're going across that bottom because it's the grain's the same way on this. If I turn it round there and I was going that way, would I then be going the right way if I'm coming this way? <laughs> with that tool, is the only tool with that cutter fitted the way it's fitted that you can actually cut and shear cut all the way out of that. And that's why I couldn't, I couldn't stand down that bottom bit, but there's no... There's a couple of little tool marks, but you can't get it perfect. I mean, come on. If I spent more time, I could, but doing it on video. Um, but there's no torn grain, and it doesn't need sanding in there. Perfect. So if you're into doing vases like that, that's the tools you want, guys. Right, there we go. Thank you for joining me. I've kept saying I'm going to do a deeper, deeper vase, and that is eight inches tall, that one. So um, I kept saying I was going to do... A deeper one i've got it done out of the way now there you go <laughs> finished i ain't got to do that one no more done <laughs> <laughs> right so and actually that's um that bit of wood is is quite if you see that that on the end of that that's actually quite a punky sort of bit of wood really mm -hmm. it's got a bit of punkiness to it but we got it to go so there you go nice little vase just got to get some flowers to put in it now yeah Right, thank you for joining me, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Toodle pip for now. Bye, guys.